Don't miss the brand new Caradron Overlords Arcanaut Frigate. This is the middle sized ship and it is fresh. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, taking a look at the very first ship to release for the Caradron Overlords. Now, this is the Frigate. This is the middle sized ship. This is a Dread Knight or Flyer size base. I think it's a 120 mil oval right there, just to give you an idea of the size. This is an $80 kit uh, from Games Workshop itself. It features 88 components, uh, three of which are just right there. That's actually a bunch of. The majority of the hull is just three different components right there, which you are about to see. It comes with the base, of course, and that brand new cool flying stem. You flip it over on the back, you can see some of the painting schemes here, but remember, there are some painting schemes in the Battle Tome to show you how to paint some of the different sky forts or ports, whatever you want to call them, for the different clans of these guys. So lots of opportunity for customization. There's probably one of those that suits your playability or your personal style, I guess, of, uh, of play, so to speak. So definitely check those out in the battle tone, but we're just gonna go over the rules and the actual unboxing of this new model here today. Now, of course, it comes with a couple of different miniatures. You've got the Aetheric Navigator, which actually plays a role in some extra movement mechanics that may or may not happen, depending on how you do it. It comes with a Captain and the Endrin Rigger, I guess is how you say that. Endrin? I'm going to go with Endrin for a lack of a better pronunciation at this time. Now, these are Endrin Buoyants? Uh, buoyant, buoyancy Endrins. They're, they're basically, they harvest the Aether Gold somehow and they work it into a lighter than, than air metal and through some magic wizardry this thing floats and also mines somehow the gold itself that that these guys need they got to get it it powers everything they do it powers their their city so that's kind of the background and why this stuff looks kind of the way it does all steampunkish and and things like that but it's i mean it's just a fantastic flavor to the whole thing i feel like and a lot of people out there uh, seem to be agreeing as a lot of these miniatures are already out of stock now these guys do have a transport mechanic to them which is really interesting to see. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that because that's going to be part of our tips and tactics breakdown in our new Battle Tome book. But for this particular unboxing, you've got, of course, the instruction manual, the two sprues themselves, the flyer slash dreadnought size base, and this brand new flying stem right here, which has a large flat front that looks to be about 30, a 32 mil oval right there. And then of course the little ball and socket kind of stem type deal, which I imagine is going to slot into a spot on the bottom of this, but I have not located yet. It might be a separate piece, which we're about to find out as we take a look at the instructions here on this bad boy. So first, before we take a look at the, the parts themselves, let's flip through the manual here, talk about some of the rules, and kind of see how this thing goes together. Now, like I said, remember the hull itself is just three parts. It's basically a top and a port and starboard piece, which you can see right there, and then there's a whole bunch more different um, bits and bobs to go on here to make it customizable. Of course, all of the rail systems, the, the steampunk kind of dwarven architecture, you've got all of your control panels and things, that's all going to be in here and it's all going to kind of go together and of course the rudder does not attach which is really neat to see. You've got these little props here that look, it doesn't look like you glue them in, I mean you can glue them in but they might be they might have tight enough tolerances that you could actually spin them, but then if it falls off, you might lose it. So it doesn't look like it clasps together, so you might want to glue those down, but it's up to you right there. And then some of the uh, point defense weapons when you get charged here, you've got the different bombs and drills and, and things that we're going to talk about. There's the, the cannons that this thing comes with. Uh, I think it's uh, aether shot carbines, and there's ways to do multiple shots of that. And then there's the buoyancy engines themselves and the little spot where you can put the navigator guy, which you can uh, build right here. Oh, whoop, whoop, that's the captain, and he comes with his uh, steering mechanism. You've got a couple of different options for it. You can take the skyhook, uh, or 
a heavy sky cannon for the front facing weapon which is right goes in right here and then for your point defense stuff like I said you got the bombs and the, uh, you can actually drop mines which I think this might be right here might be the big the big mine that it drops out the back for when they are charged and then of course uh, on the sides here you have those carbines we talked about so lots and lots of different bits that go into this. some hoses some scaffolding the ways the grab shoots and things that they use uh, to jump around this thing here and then there's the navigator himself which you don't have to put together you can just kind of leave it open if you want then you've got uh, some of the, the what is this the engine rigger himself and then the captain of course uh, steers it from his captain spot and there it is so once you get it all together and paint it up, it could look like that, but let's go over the rules. Now that's just one of, of many uh, Sky Fort, Sky Port color schemes that you can pick from this. Now the one thing I didn't like about it, and you're going to see this is actually molded in. There's no way to get around the little uh, dwarven beard um, kind of mascot guy on the front there. So unless you scrape it down, of course, which we all know how that goes right so here's the Arcanaut frigate it has a variable move mechanic starts out 10 but then when it starts taking damage it goes down you can actually have that if you do the order give the power to the guns where you get to reroll hits a one in the shooting phase uh, for the Arcanaut frigate itself it looks like the whole thing so then and it can't run so that would go down to five it's got 14 wounds five up save seven bravery here's its uh, one per ship weapons and of course it's got the aether shot carbines which have variable attacks depending on how much damage it's taking remember this one on each side doesn't matter you draw a line of sight from from the whole thing there and then the belaying valves which are its melee weapons uh, also have a variable attack profile right here so it looks like the most favorable one here is going to be the heavy sky cannon, which hits on fours, but it wounds on twos, neg two, run D6 damage. So re-rolling ones could do some work right there. Keep an eye out for that mechanic. Now it does have the navigator, which was that guy right there. So apparently if there's a friendly navigator visible to this unit, which I guess is another one. I, I don't know exactly how that works. I haven't dug into the battle tome yet, but just keep this in mind. Just follow along with the words. And I might not necessarily know what they what they all mean yet. The frigate can move an extra D3 in the movement phase. So that would be helpful. You know, an extra D3 inches averages two, 12 inch move. And they fly. That's pretty good. I like it. And there we talked about the order. The bomb racks are kind of cool. Um, not exactly a super game breaker, but if any, any enemy units end its charge within one, it can drop the drills or the bombs. The enemy unit cannot choose to pile in if you use the drills. Units to fly are not affected. The bombs, enemy units suffer D3 mortal wounds. Units that fly are not affected. So if it does get charged by more, more, multiple wounds, I suppose this are multiple units, you can activate this multiple times, I would assume. The skyhook itself, if one or more enemy units suffer an unsaved wound, the Arcanaut frigate can immediately move D6 inches as long as the move closer to one of these units so i guess it wrenches itself in towards that particular unit and then the sky mines which i think might be this thing in the back that it drops off or that's just some sort of propulsionary device not exactly sure yet when an enemy unit that can fly ends its charge within one of a frigate roll a dice for each model in the charging unit on a roll of six that's the unit suffers a mortal wound so that's okay but just something to, to remember there uh, they do have the tireless Endrin Rigger, which is that guy with the wrench. Roll a dice for, for this model in each of your hero phases on a roll of four or more. It heals one wound, so that's kind of cool. Get back wounds right there. And they can overburden themselves to carry extra models, but it reduces the move characteristic by one inch for each of the extra models up to 15 from 10. Now there is an embark kind of mechanic here that we're not going to really get into on this but you can pause the video and read it for yourself right there. This may be a preview of 8th edition 40k how they're going to switch to things. Not exactly sure yet but we're going to have a lot more to say about that. I want to get over to the model itself and there's the paint guide as well. Before we blow through all of our time on this particular video. So first up is the hull sprue, which you're going to see, let's zoom in on this a little bit better. So here you go, you can see you've got the top fuselage kind of type deal and the detail on it. it's amazing. Look at all these rivets, all these little hooks to get their lines on and things like that. Just all sorts of the dwarven crazy innate artificery that we would expect to see from the dwarfs themselves. And then you've got each side here, this looks to be 
This is gonna be your port side, and like I said, it is, the detail is engraved in the part itself. There's the recesses for the carbine guns. And this is gonna be your starboard side there, and then all the doohickeys and all the extra things that come along with it are fantastically detailed and look great on this bad boy. Now for size, here's the Chaos Space Marine, just to give you an idea, this is a standard size sprue. So this is gonna be roughly somewhere along your Rhino size kind of type deal, but it's gonna be standing on top or mounted on top of a flyer base, just to give you an idea there. Now it is also hollow, so you could perhaps mount some LED lights or do some sort of craziness there. Also, you know, um, I'm not sure how you would hook up the battery, but there looks to be some spots in the back here that you might be able to not glue down the uh, bomb racks and things and just have some removable type components with magnets. That's up to you crazy hobby ma maniacs out there. Whatever you do, make sure you post pictures on Facebook so we can check it out. And then the second sprue in this menagerie here is gonna be all of your little ballast pieces, some of the cockpit, the, the captain's area right here, the captain himself, the uh, little engineer guy, and then you've got the navigator that goes up top, all your wiring, your harnesses, your rudder, and all of your masts and mounts and different things, and there's uh, how whatever the thing is that they use to steer it, I would say the wheel, but knowing them, it's probably something a little bit more whimsical in nature right there. So that you can see on the back, all of these ballasts themselves are of course open aired. So they are hollow, again, got some great potential right there for some dope LEDs or something like that. But again, it's not gonna make this model weigh that much when it comes to that. Now, the one thing I was actually didn't even see was how they mount that to the base. So I think that's an important thing. We need to go look at the manual. So it looks like it goes in the bottom there on the longitudinal. So it goes right in here somewhere on this longitudinal little slot. Okay, so there's a slot right there on the longitudinal that goes the length. Oh, so it's a two-part slot. Okay, so there it is right there. So it's a two-part slot, so make sure when you're gluing this together that you got a nice good dry fit on that and that your stem is gonna fit, fit in there because when it, the more parts you add to any assembly, the more room for error you might have there. So there's our there's our first build tip. Always dry fit everything with these with these uh, models right here. But, and definitely this stuff up here to make sure you're all squared up. You don't want your, your sails or your ballast looking all buster flipping all over the place. So that is pretty much it for this, whoops, for this one here. This is a great new looking model, $80 from Games Workshop. I think it was, what, 88 different components along with the base and the stem and stuff. If you like all of our video features here, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can also support us over on Patreon and get a monthly shipment of miniatures delivered to your door and head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos. Become a veteran of the long war today. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the longwar.net. Visit the longwar.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longwar.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.